peace love light wisdom guidance blessings and discernment beautiful souls in this world you don't know we are not of this world cool baby there you don't know the thing already okay bless up yourself i hope everybody's having a blessed and prosperous thursday on today okay a pre-friday okay um i just wanted to stop in with you guys and just touch on something um about a conversation that i had earlier this rising and um i just feel very deep in my spirit that god needs his chosen vessels in the body to be edified by this word right here okay so let's jump right on in so listen the enemy targets chosen vessels of God's correct I know we all know that it's like the coolie that's obvious right so let's go a little bit deeper what exactly about you is the enemy targeting is he targeting your finances is he targeting your your accomplishments is he targeting your endeavors as he's targeting you know what is the enemy targeting well let me let you know this the enemy cannot and does not care about your money okay what can he do with that he can't he, he's not able to do nothing with your money so he's not targeting your money okay the enemy is not targeting your job because he could care less about a nine to five he can care less his goal is not to be having a job and working out here okay so a lot of these things that you may believe that it may seem like okay well he's targeting my money you know now i'm broke and all these things that's just an outcome of what he truly targeted and so i want to you know bring awareness to this the enemy's target is your belief system the way you use your mind your mind is the enemy's target this is why god told us in scripture that we must become transformed by the renewing of our what our mind he didn't say become transformed by the renewing of your finances by the renewing of your job no he said become transformed by the renewing of your mind your mind is what the enemy targets and so if he can get your mind to be in a state where you're not really prioritizing the will of God you're not really prioritizing the things that you know for a fact God is not pleased with or God wants no parts to do with you know if you're not prioritizing those things the enemy is going to guess what he has you he has your mind and let me tell you how if the enemy has your mind he got you he got you there's no gray area there if the enemy has your mind bound of course you can be delivered and that and deliverance have everything to do with you choosing to be delivered are you going to put yourself in a position to become delivered are you going to give give god room to come in and make deliverance take place you know you don't just say okay deliver me god no you gotta do your part too you understand faith without work is dead you can't say you got faith and say oh god gonna do this and you're not doing the necessary steps that is required for you to get your deliverance for you to get what you know that god is speaking over and for your life you see me so the enemy is targeting your mind now based on the conversation i had earlier this rising um i want to like use an example and this is just a very simple example there's many more examples that we can use but based because this is the the conversation that i had that led me to doing such a word i want to use this right and so this can go for men or women okay um and so for example if you are being invited to go out or whatever right you don't know where you're going you just know your guys maybe your your brothers maybe your sisters maybe you all are just going out for occasion maybe somebody's getting married maybe it's somebody's birthday you don't know right it's just an occasion and everyone's going out you don't know where you're going then say a couple days before you come to find out you guys are going to the strip club right this is just an example 
So you guys come to find out you're going to the strip club. Now, as a believer, as somebody whose life was transformed by God's mercy and God's grace, as someone who says you are choosing to be in God's perfect good and pleasing will and you want so bad to do what God orders you to do. You want God to order your steps. You want to be in his will. You don't want to be in the world anymore. You want to come out. Now, these are the things that you're saying now. These are the things that you've been saying and preaching and, and, and you know, whenever the conversation comes about, you're like, oh no, I need to be in God's will. I'm done with the old me. I'm done with my old life, you know, X, Y, and Z. And now, as I said before, maybe this is your family member. Maybe this is such a huge occasion, like a wedding, a bachelor party, or, you know, maybe this is someone who's very important to you, right? And maybe the occasion is something that's very important to them, which in their mind would stem that it should be important to you too. And even in your own mind, right? Because for example, say it's my sister, me and my sister is like, is like this, and say it's her urge strong or something, and or she's getting married, and like me being her sister is like required for me to be there you know things like that so what do you do chosen vessel what do you do chosen vessel do you just go because it's my sister and i have to be there for my sister so i'm gonna go even though i know that this is a place that god would not have me want me plant me there like especially if i've dealt with lust before especially if it took me so long to be delivered for pornography especially if it now yes i'm going deep because i'm i'm needing to be real because edification needs to take place so what do you do chosen vessel what do you do now based upon the conversation that i was having the other person spoke and said that well i would not want to be there I, I don't I don't I don't feel like I would want to be there so I wouldn't want to be there but because it's so and so I mean I would just go but I wouldn't want to be there and remind you guys it's levels to faith you got to go from faith to faith to glory to glory It's levels to this walk okay it's levels to this right so that's just the mind state all right that somebody is at and so my question, when I heard that, I said, okay, well, um, what do you, let me ask you this. Do you think that God created strip clubs? That was my question. And I know it's like, cool, you just jumping in, girl. Like, yeah, because why are we sugarcoating around God's word? Why are we sugarcoating God's intention? Why are we sugarcoating the things and the word of god why are we sugarcoating it let's j literally jump let's dive in and jump in ask the real questions ask the 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 real root the rooted questions that needs to be asked let's really do that and so the answer was no i know that god did not create strip clubs all right so i went deeper don't you think what, well, what do you think God would need you? He would need you being a strip club for. It doesn't matter how saved you are. How it, What do you believe that God will have purpose for you to be in a strip club? Especially if you are someone who have been, you so you say, you've been delivered from lust. You've been, you, you, you know, you were struggling so hard with certain things that 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 can you know go hand in hand with being at a strip club and what they what takes place at a strip club and what can happen people are drinking so people are under the influence so you know you know when you drink you get under influence that is not of god no way shape or form that's strictly the enemy so where he can get his minions to come inside of you to do things that's why you can't remember if you really drink and get drunk you cannot remember half the things that took place because those minions came into you now you got to catch this in the spirit those minions came into you and had their way with your vessel and then probably took on another vessel and it was it's just crazy we don't want to dive deep into these things like this because it hits a nerve where we cannot do the things we want to do people want to drink because oh you know i, I want to feel good i want to feel nice i want to feel drunk you know people want to drink so when the word of god 
you know go contrary to them wanting to drink then it's like they try to make excuses to do what they want to do we got to stop this it has to come to a halt are you with god are you not the bible says choose on this day whom you will serve not choose on this day because there's there's an event and you want to do what you want to do so on this day you're not going to choose me but tomorrow you're going to come back because you know i'm going to forgive you that's another thing that came up the person said so what you think god gonna just punish me because i went to the strip club quote i'm quoting the person god knows my heart god knows my heart he knows that i didn't want to be there in the first place Woo so my response was and now my seasoned people y'all already know like and, and my my growing people in christ you already know that you're going to come across conversations like this. You're going to come across people that seem so belligerent or seem so unwise. You're going to come across people in their mind. Now, I'm not, these are, these are not like the actual person I'm talking about. I'm talking about the mind state, the mindset, the, en the enemy is after your mind. Your mind is the target. Okay. So you're going to have some people who's not there yet. You're going to have some people who hasn't, you know, got up that Jacob's ladder. You understand? You're going to have some of those people. And so, we have to learn how to respond how to react in these circumstances now if i was the old me i would have turned up and the, the i would have been turning up for christ but that's still no excuse there's no reason why you should be turning up on somebody because their belief system is not yet where it needs to be especially if they're a christian so if they're christian they're probably a baby christian so you can't like try to you know react in a way that you're coming on them condemning them especially if they're baby christians that's dangerous you don't want to do that because then they can turn away from god and then their blood will be on your hands you don't want to do that so you know i i kept having responses right where the holy spirit was leaving and i allowed the holy spirit to leave me because at one point the holy spirit said all right stop now and then the conversation was done so um of course all my responses were in love right and i asked the questions that i asked and the only reason i asked the question that i asked is because the holy spirit was having me have that person really dive into their mind like you listen to what you just said and i want you to hear this question now do you think god created strip clubs and he wanted you to have a ministry in a strip club do you think do you do you just do you think that yes or no now if that person would have said yes that would have been their mind state at that time that would have been the level of where their mind is on you understand so after the person said well god knows my heart and he knows that i even though i'm there i wouldn't i don't feel i don't would not have wanted to be there anyway so then my next response was yes Oh, and then the person said, well, do you think God is going to punish me? Do you think just God is just going to punish me because, uh, you know, I'm there, even though he knows my heart. No, I don't want to be there. So I said, okay, no, God may or may not punish you. I can't answer that. That's God's answer for you. Will God forgive you? Yes. Will God leave you? No, he would never leave you nor forsake you no matter what you do. He would never leave you nor forsake you, right? But yes, also, yes, God does know your heart and he does know you don't want to be there if that's truly the truth. God, yes, God does know that you truly don't want to be there. Yes, God, God does see your heart. He does look at your heart. Now, and then my next statement was, but guess what? God also looks at your decision. God also looks at the free will that you are given and the free will that you're fully able and have the capacity to utilize and he looks at what you did with your free will especially this make it worse the fact that someone would feel like oh i don't want to be there but you still decided nobody put a gun to your head nobody made you remember not even the devil can make you do nothing so the fact that you didn't feel like you wanted to go you don't want to be there but you still chose to take up your feet and go in that place god looks at that too you could have decided if you so-called didn't want to really be there you can have decided not to go and so this is this is just an example you know one example but th this can go into so many things of our life 
so many things of our life. The enemy is after your mind. Your mind is the target. The enemy is after your mind. How can you cover your mind? The Bible tells you to put on the full armor of God. The full armor of God and one of those being the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. I challenge all of you right now to read. This is just the Holy Spirit I hear. Read Ephesians. This is where you would see and learn and read of putting on the whole full armor of God. When you read putting on the full armor of God, you would know exactly what to put on, what to take up, what to fight with. You would know and you would know how to keep your mind covered because the enemy is after your mind the way you believe for something your belief system that has a lot that ties a lot to do with your mind and this is what the enemy is after your mind the way you think if you think that doing something that god has absolutely not nothing to do with and god excuse me is nowhere close in his will but your mind is like, oh, well, I'm not hurting nobody, so I'm going to do it. Even though you know that God, it's a no-no for him. So what if you're not hurting somebody? You're hurting God and you're hurting yourself, your innermost being. You're hurting yourself and you're hurting God because that is not what God wants you to do. And you would have known that because God would definitely confirm you. God is not going to have you blindly walk into something lest you so choose. Remember, choose, choice, choice, free will. You have it. You have it. Now, how will you use it? How will you use it? The enemy is after our mind, beloveds. The enemy is after our minds, chosen vessels. And I, God, yourself, your children, if you have your family, your, your spouses, they need you to come into the mind, the transformed mind, okay, the renewed mind that God needs you to have in order to walk this walk because we can say and scream and yell that we're Christian all we want we can say scream and yell that we serve God all we want but it's our behaviors it's our decisions it's our choices that's going to really show who we are in Christ that's why God tells you that not everybody that say Lord Lord is of God. Not everybody that say, Lord, Lord, is fit for the kingdom. Those very same people that fasted, casted demons out, spoke in tongues, all these things. God, the Bible tells you a lot of those people are going to hear the words, depart from me, I never knew you. So you don't just want to be having a form of godliness for the world because you want the people to see that, oh, he loved God, she loved God. No, you don't want to have just a form of godliness. You want to really be who God needs you to be. You want to really have the mind of God. You want to have the mind and the thoughts of God. So that way, because you have the mind and the thoughts of God, your feet moves in the way of God. Your, your, your decisions, your choices moves in the way of God. Your hands moves in the way of God. You go where God would go. You don't go where God won't go. You speak what God would speak. You don't speak. You don't curse. You don't, you don't, you don't do any of that. And I know a lot of, like I said, this can go for so many things. Another example is with using cursing words, curse words, right? A lot of people say, oh, that's nothing. I'm not going to go to hell for it. No, that may not be a heaven and hell issue. But why would you live the life that God gave you saying you serve God, but you're over here cursing deliberately? You're intentionally cursing. And then you got people around you that may be baby Christians or maybe, you know, people in the world that is, you know, really seeking something truthful, something true and truthful. And the only truth is God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. And you'll, so you're out here portraying God to be someone that curses. No. Do you think that God wants you to represent him like that? Remember, we're representation of the kingdom. We're representation of the most high God. So do you think God is wanting you to rep him like that? I'm telling you, this can go for so many things. And I know this is going to be very edifying to so many of you. I know this is going to be very eye-opening. Some of you is resonating right now as you speak. Some of you are feeling conviction. And that's 
that's great let the holy spirit flow with the conviction repent repent see what see what the holy spirit is speaking to you that you may have been doing wrong or you may have been doing in a way that god would not have you to do like you know open your eyes to the conviction see what the holy spirit is speaking repent and move forward yes just like i told the person i had the conversation with earlier god will forgive you you repent ask for forgiveness and believe that you are forgiven god will forgive you but you don't want to deliberately and willingly sin just because you know god will forgive you now the bible tells you about, about that that's dangerous and that's something you do not want any parts of i'm telling you right now so remember the enemy is after your mind you don't want to have a reprobated mind you don't want to that's not what god have in store for you that's not what god originated for you be transformed be ye transformed be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind let god renew your mind and tell the enemy his time is up he cannot have your mind no more. He cannot have your desires anymore. He cannot have your actions no more. He cannot have your responses no more. He cannot have your behavior anymore. No, he cannot have the your lips, your tongue anymore. No, tell the enemy that's it. That's it. His time is up. Glory be to God. I believe that this word was very, very, very edifying. Take it to God as always. Always take it to God because God needs to reveal more to you. This is this is just what God tells me to speak. And then guess what? When your ears fall on this word, he allows himself to go deeper with you. If you so choose to allow him to come in. God is a gentleman. He's not going to force himself on you. This is why people are doing what they want to do now in the world. Because God is not forcing himself on them. He's letting them choose. But you will always see the hand of God. That's why one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that God is the one and true living God. So let this edify you. Let this speak into your spirit. Take it to Christ. And then afterwards, do what you need to do. Repent. You know, fall on your face. Ask God for forgiveness. And then move accordingly. All right. God loves you. I love you so much. But God loves you so much more that he's ready and willing to, you know, forgive you. Take you up under his wing. Teach you. Give you the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of everything that you need. Okay. So... Bless upon yourself. You're done with the thing already. Cool to be again. The enemy is after your mind, but you don't have to give in. You don't have to. Because you have the dominion, not the enemy. You. I love you so much. Cool to be Oh, make sure you stay tuned for the Cooler Baby Expresses podcast season two, episode one. will be airing this Saturday at 6.45 a.m. Eastern time. You don't want to miss it. Okay, the link will be down there in the description. If you miss Movie Monday and the Movie Monday live stream, hit that link. It's down there waiting for you to catch up. Okay, I love you so much. Bless up yourself. You've done the thing already. Cool, baby, there. Mwah. The word is I fight for sin. Anything opposite that